Good evening, everyone. We'd like to welcome you to the first talk of a series of architecture and historical talks that we're going to host here in the Berlin Bath. Um, we'll just give you a, a brief introduction about the Berlin Bath. So the Berlin Bath is a project that we're working on, the Bahrain Authority of Culture is working on here in Mohara, and it's uh, basically 16 heritage houses uh, that are uh, that are linked together uh, with this pathway, and it's uh, inscribed with the UNESCO Heritage List. And within this project, we also work on urban habitations, rehabilitations, so such as the parking project done by Christian Carrots and and also the public square, which are done by Christian Gies, David Bensevier, and Baskets. Uh, I would like to welcome. Um, our uh, our guest for the panel discussion, who's Ali Ismail Karimi. Ali is an architect who works, whose work explores social housing public spaces and the landscape of the GCP countries. Ali received his master's in architecture from the Harvard Graduate School of Design and previously worked in Chile and in Belgium with office businesses. That is not Ali. Good evening, everyone. And thank you all for being here and for uh, bracing the Bahraini winter to be sitting for this lecture. Uh, I, th I thank you also, Batul, for the invitation. I think it's really exciting to, to one, see the Berlin path come into fruition, which we'll hear about today, and also the beginnings of these efforts in, uh, in how to really come together. But not only in physical space, but also in the intellectual and conversational space. So to be able to have this conversation today and hear from the architect and the landscape architect the kind of thoughts behind the design of these spaces. Um, so we'll be having a presentation and then a moderated discussion amongst ourselves and questions from the audience as well. So to read the bios, David Van Sevelen uh, was born in uh, Ghent in 1978, graduated in architecture and urbanism at the University of Ghent, Belgium, and at the Escuela Tecnica Superior de Arquitectura in Madrid, Spain. He worked with Stephen Beal Architects and Xavier de Reiter in, uh, as well. He was visiting tutor at various uh, international education institutions, including the University of Ghent, the Berlaf Institute in Rotterdam, the Ac uh, Academy, the Architecture of Versailles, Columbia GSA, and is currently holding professorship at Harvard GSD. In 2002, he founded Office together with Kirsten Gibbs. In 2009, 2013, and 2015, they were awarded with the Belgian Prize for Architecture. In 2016, with Art Prize Berlin, and in 2010, with the Silver Line and the 12th Venice Bi uh, Biennial of Architecture. Various monographic publications, such as Seven Rooms, uh, 2G, number uh, 63, El Croquis 185, have presented their works alongside the extensive book, Office, Volumes 1, 2, and 3, uh, published by Walter Kahn. As for Bas, Bas Smets received a master's degree in architecture and civil engineering from the University of Leuven and a postgraduate qualification in landscape architecture from the University of Geneva. He regularly lectures at international institutions such as the Harvard GSD and APFL in Lausanne. He founded his office in Brussels in 2007 and has constructed projects in more than 12 countries with his team of 17 architects and landscape architects. In 2008, he was awarded the Biennial Prize for Young Landscape Architects, Najat, from the French Ministry of Culture. Ten years later, he received the award for urbanism from the French Academy of Architecture. His first monographic exhibition of this project was co-produced by the International Arts Campus in Antwerp and the Art Envrive Center for Architecture in Bordeaux. He was appointed General Commissioner for the Biennial of Architecture of Bordeaux in 2007. Thank you, Ali. Thank you uh, also, everybody, for this invitation. Uh, we're very happy to be back in Bahrain. Um, Bas and me, uh, I'm David, and this is Bas. Um, well, uh, of course, I represent uh, our office called Office Kessel uh, and Basir. Um, and we, we, uh, we, we actually um, just flew in, we just landed. So this is a kind of a yeah, deep dive into Bahrain again. Uh, we, we, we did this several times um, in, the, in the past and we'll continue doing this in the future. Uh, just to give a kind of a small history about how we got involved. I mean, I, I'm sure you all know Bahrain, uh, the island. <laughs> but um, also this, uh, the history of, of the island. And, and we got to know this, this history uh, extensively through uh, actually meeting Noura Al-Sayed 
Um, we, we met her, actually, that's a small anecdote, in the 2010 uh, biennial in, um, in Venice, uh, on the stage. Uh, they got the golden line and we got the silver one. Um, so that was a good introduction, let's say, for, for uh, collaboration. And, uh, and so the years that came after, um, we, we started uh, working with the Ministry of Culture of Bahrain. And uh, also Bas got involved. And so uh, since, since, let's say, 2011, and now I'm really already <laughs> starting to think, wow, so many years have passed. We are here and, um, and we are um, very proud and happy to be part of a project that is just getting more and more mature. And today we're having this lecture in this uh, amazing building of Old Chati. Uh, as the visitor center of what is a, a great project for, for Muharak. Anyway, Muharak, this is, I think, 1930s. Just, uh, well, it's, it's uh, of course, beautiful with, with the old town and, and then also the, the little peninsula with the fortress still over it. <coughs> and uh, after 1960, the reclamation, uh, there's not so much left of, let's say, the old edge of Muharak, but uh, it's still visible inside, in the tissue of Muharak itself. And so when we were asked, uh, Bas and uh, ourselves, to, to think about how could you make path through this maze, uh, we had to think, of course, about the entire scale, the today's situation, etc. So uh, maybe also small, Anecdote again, I mean, we, we, we learned about all the history, even about uh, of Muharak and, 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 and also about Bahrain, and Bahrain meaning two waters, and it's almost like a well coming out of the sea, water, and it was like a, an oasis, and there's even references to, to Eden, if you want. And, 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 and of course, when, when this happened, apparently a lot of these water wells were, were destroyed or were let's say, dysfunction, and, and, and somehow it's, it's our like, dream of Eden, you could say, uh, it, was, it was lost. And, and maybe in our project that we'll show you, there's a moment of trying to make small moments of Eden back in, in Muharraq. So Muharraq, as we, and it is today, uh, well, from the sky, um, again, uh, the oldest part, and mainly also very much linked to, to an old uh, tradition of pearling. Uh, that's why we are here, the pearl pump. And uh, this is like pictures from 2013, I think, or 12, at the Siadi uh, Mosque and Complex. Again, in the souk areas, we were walking this kind of invisible area what is later to become the path. And suddenly arriving in big open areas, we, we, we saw there were like dense areas, open areas. I mean, how to deal with that as, a, as a, actually a, a European architect or landscape architect? We were very puzzled because there's also a tradition in Arabic uh, culture in terms of public space, which is very different than in Europe. And so we, we started to see all kinds of opportunities. We call them opportunities. And what is opportunities? Bas will explain a lot more about that. But these opportunities were, were basically moments in the tissue, in the kind of very dense labyrinthic tissue of Mahar, with these beautiful buildings that were totally unrestored. This is a picture we took. I mean, I, I'm sure today it looks different. Huh? I mean, we, we already saw it different, already, but that was the, the, the picture as we saw it. And so there was a lot of work to be done. And we also heard of Gassan that there has uh, been so much. I mean, we were there at, at that moment imagining, envisioning together this project, but nothing was visible. And so, so it's, it's an amazing thing to, to see today that there is so much suddenly visible.
this is also a small moment where we come back later to in a, a dar in the on, on the route, other little bad moments that are totally, let's say, uh, in bad state, but that's that's okay. Again, and thus I let you the word. Maybe a word about the collaboration um, with David Kersen. We've been working together on, on many projects in the last 10 years. We started our offices together and by accident 300 meters away from each other in Brussels. Um, so in a kind of um, very smooth way, we started doing many projects together. We built in, in, in France and in Switzerland and Belgium. And then came this project and, and Darwin Kersen asked me, like, would I want to be involved? But this one was different because normally we do a, a competition together. Um, Imagine the competition together, and then they do the building, and I do the landscaping. And here was the idea: Can we make a project um, together? There's no building, there's no landscaping. It is public space, and it became a whole adventure where we had to work together in a very close way, deciding everything um, together, which I thought was 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 yeah a very important step, maybe also in the, in the collaboration. And as David showed you the pictures of 2013, we were selecting them uh, on the way here in the airplane. We it was also going back into, into time, um, as, as, and as, 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 as you said, the, the, the how to make this um, cultural almost, how, how to, together with the Noura, with Sheikh Ahmed, with Hassan, also with, uh, with Allah, how to imagine this, this big change that, that, that has happened and is happening right now. And, and the first thing we did, and that's why I really wanted to show those pictures again, was walking, like walking the, 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 the maze. Um, and, 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 and really thinking, what should we do? And, and I'll show you some of the images that helped us imagining this. As you know, uh, um, a number of buildings were put on the World Heritage List, which is the start of this uh, Berlin uh, project. You can see them here. There's like a, the primary buildings, there are secondary buildings, and then a kind of a strange line was drawn. We didn't draw it, um, and it was connecting buildings that were linked to the pearling industry, from the, 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 the captain's house to the place where the shells were, were cleaned, to the place where they were um, uh, sold. But in this, I remember discussing this. It's a bit like in a newspaper, you get these numbers, and then you kind of go from one to three, and then you see a giraffe in the end. It was kind of a, it was kind of inverse uh, way, and, and we thought the path doesn't make that much sense by itself because it's. It's not the path that the Berlin uh, people would have used. It was just connecting elements that were linked and that, that, that were today still that still visible. So, and also when walking the path, I mean, yeah, you go from a sidewalk to another sidewalk. Um, so, so, so it was less the path that had our interest than this kind of um, open space. You see it here. As you see them here, we, we found these kind of open lots and we understood that it was houses that had been uh, demolished or that had just um, had fallen apart. When we asked the, the ministry what their thoughts were, they said, yeah, we'll rebuild them. We'll, we'll go back to the original maze. But we thought, and then that came as an important word, maybe it's an opportunity to do something else than just rebuilding the maze. Um, Maybe it's an opportunity to invent a new type of public space for this very dense, labyrinth, uh, um, urban fabric. Especially taking into account that the connection with the water, this is the original connection, had been lost, had been lost because of the, the ring road. So we thought where before there was this almost Venice type of quality of, of, of these big houses, being half on the land, half in the water, that's lost. Maybe we can invent a new kind of landscape. We thought maybe can, we can make a kind of inner landscape. Yeah. Refer to, to Eden, maybe instead of, well, since we didn't have that connection to the water anymore, maybe we, 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 we see what we can do within um, the fabric. And so we call them opportunities and we listed them. And we had 23, and then we had 17, and then we had 15, and then we had 18, and we had, it always changed as, as with or as is the case with opportunities. Um, but we thought it, 
it's very interesting to have these 16 or 17 houses and then these 16 or 17 plazas. So it becomes a kind of sequence because the idea would be that you would start from the Seadi Mosque and it's about a three kilometer walk, so about a, an hour, an hour and a half, uh, all the way to, to um, Bumail. I need to come back <laughs> the, the words. Um, so we thought it was very nice that you could also rest, um, find a kind of little microclimate um, on your um, walk towards the, 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 the Gulf. And so we thought we didn't want to import European space, whatever that would mean. We didn't want to make um, something that was, we wanted to make something different. And, and this difference was in making it highly contextual, um, based on the opening that we found in the, in the maze. So, so it was not about importing an idea, but really looking at, at what could be done uh, locally. With this idea of making this linear, fragmented landscape that in, in, a, in a way compensates the loss of the connection with the, with the water. And then these are a number of, of collages that the that office made. So the idea of really cutting out a piece um, and inserting this new plaza, this new landscape with very um, discernible materials. The, the, the soil is different, the trees are different, the furniture is different, the lighting is different. It's, it's like a moment that we cut out um, of the fabric. And instead of, because I remember during the competition, it was a competition, some of our competitors, they, they decided or they proposed to actually mark the trail, like you would paint red, for example. But we decided not to do that, but to, to, to create a kind of a system of help that leads you from one plaza to the other. And the help, we thought, we call it the crumbles, Hansel and Gretel, we thought we should do it with material from the side, so we chose to do it with lampposts. So lampposts actually guide you from one to to plaza to the other. And I remember it was just after summer, and I had come back from the Alps, and I loved in the Alps that you take these paths, and they're only marked with these little stone piles, right? So that, uh, there was this idea of marking a path with material from the side, and not adding this big sign saying a uh, road path uh, to the right. And since all this was quite new, um, we decided together with the ministry, with Sheikh Ame and, and Nur al Sayed, to make a mock up, to make a, a kind of a model one to one um, where we could test these ideas. And this was very important because um, we needed to test how to make the concrete, we needed to test how to plant the trees, how to make the lighting. Um, all, all these elements needed testing, and this was very helpful in 2013 and 14 to make these two, two mock ups. And I'll show you some pictures from the, 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 um, the construction side. So the, the idea was to make, we call it a kind of an outdoor room. It's outdoor, but it's, it actually has the quality of a room. Also thinking back of the fact that you, there used to be a house here. So in, in a way you're in the house, except there's no walls anymore. Um, and so we wanted to create a, a special type of concrete um, inserted with um, oyster shells, going back to the, to the purling. Um, and so here you see the pouring of the concrete, you see the, 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 the openings for the trees. Then you see the, the polishing of the concrete. Very hard to picture it, but, but you can see the, the oyster shells in it. Since it hardly rains, we could really have a very polished concrete. We would never use that in Europe, because with the rain or the snow it would be too slippery. Um, but here we could make this very high quality concrete. To, to, we, we brought um, some knowledge from France to, to make this for the mock-up. Um, and then, with what we've learned, the other plazas were made locally. So was, the idea was like the mock-up allowed us to, to push as far as we could the kind of um, research. And then we transcribed that to local practices. That, that, so, so it also in a, in a way of, 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 um, of, of, uh, of, having, of evolving the, 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 the knowledge uh, locally. This is, it's, it's not a good picture, but I quite like it because you don't even know if it's a model or if it's reality. So this, and, and that's the quality of these, of these mock-ups and of these plazas. It, they're strange. I mean, there, there's a strangeness to it that we really like. You, you can see this wall, which was a, a, a wall of, of the house. Um, and so this, 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 quality, this kind of intimate quality of public space, not 
not the big gesture, but the kind of intimacy. And then a, a bench, a water fountain, so, so very, very local. This is, this is strange images. Then we choose the, the trees. Um, we tested two types of trees. In the Lolix Regia, which you see here, um, this kind of a, we wanted to make this canopy. It was quite difficult because we were not allowed to import trees into Bahrain. And not, I mean, the, 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 you can only technically bring in trees with uh, bare roots, but those are small trees. So we had to source them locally. We wanted to create this continuous canopy, but the trees were too small. So it was, it was all about how fast they grow, how close can we plant them one to another. And how can we create this microclimate where the sun is blocked and where the, 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 the concrete has a kind of cooling effect? And you get these beautiful patterns of the, of the, the shade on the, on the, on the, on the concrete. These are, these are the loanings. We also tested Terminalia um, Kartapa. This is the Indian almond tree, which has a very horizontal branch structure. Um, but eventually they, they, they do create this, this horizontality. The trees had a hard time, also because in the mock-up, um, we, let's say we, we provided earth for each tree, um, but, but not more than that. And so we decided to change that in the later uh, phases, learning from the mock-up. Here also, um, with, with, a, with, 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 with office, the, 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 these, these lights, we, we try to make a kind of a cool light because everything is so yellow that suddenly there's a kind of cool light that, that makes it almost, um, you feel it's less hot just because of the, the color of the, of the light. And so the, 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 at the floor, the bench, the lighting poles, the, the water wells, all of them in the same polished uh, concrete with the, with the oyster shells. And again, this, this, this quality of this outdoor room um, that you can feel uh, in, this, uh, in this image, this, this cool light um, that creates this, this otherness within the, the maze. And here you see, I mean, it's, it's striking how much it looks like the, the, the perspective, the kind of random public space, and then at the end, in the perspective, the, 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 the plaza. So the mock-up, um, very important, and then applying it to um, the, the, all the opportunities, a total of, uh, of 17. And here, a very important dialogue also between us, like, okay, what, what have we learned? What can we do better? Um, instead of pouring the concrete, we decided to go, come up with a more modular system. What's the right module? How do we insert the lamppost? How do you do the... the, the, the the, the, the benches, how can we make a manhole, how can we make it more um, as, a, as a system that can be applied to those 16 or 17 different situations where we encounter many uh, problems that we could not foresee. So it needed to be more um, more, more kind of systematic uh, uh, approach. And where especially we looked at um, creating one uh, fertile layer in which the, the roots could grow, so not um, let's say not a planter, but like a, 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 a kind of livable area for trees uh, to, to, uh, to grow in. And this was, was essential, um, and so we looked at that in landscape architecture, maybe the, one of the more um, advanced uh, possibilities where we, we create a separation between all the earth in which the roots can grow and the flooring itself, which is supported by this Columns. So it's actually um, a, a floating uh, um, a ground floor that is not compacting the, 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 the soil in which the, 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 the roots can, can grow free. Still, um, this kind of systemic approach, trees, lampposts, and, and, uh, and benches. And then the whole system also of irrigation. Every tree is irrigated uh, uh, ind independently from, from this uh, irrigation tank. There's also a tank for drinking water um, that goes to the, to the fountain. So, so quite a sophisticated way to, to, uh, to keep um, these trees happy. And then I'll guide you through a couple of the, the, these opportunities having become uh, plazas where every time um, 
we looked at the old uh, volume of the building that had disappeared, um, enacting that volume through the mass of the trees, not literally, but, but as, a, as an idea. And then, depending on where we are in Muharraq, is it a bench, is it a, 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 an element um, for kids uh, to play in, is it a kiosk? Um, so, so, for example, here, we're at the, 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 the souk, there is this height difference, so we, we, we um, added this element of stairs that you will see, see later on the pictures. But so always very modular, we like this idea that they're all part of the same family, so that they're all similar, but always a bit different as well. Here, since we were in an area with, with many uh, families, we inserted this uh, uh, playing area uh, for kids, a long bench, like a variation on a theme. So all the bench benches are family, all the plazas are family. Here also very important uh, at the, the Siadi Mosque, formerly a building was standing here, replaced by a grid of trees, benches where people can wait before starting um, the, the pearl path. And so in a way, looking for um, a new vocabulary, but also a new way of making things. And as you can see, we didn't try to redo everything, um, but we, 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 we cut out, very in a very clean way, we cut out a piece and then insert um, this, uh, this platform. I'll show you some pictures of the, the construction site. This is the, the, the so all, all this is filled up with earth for the trees, and on this uh, these elements are built um, the, the, the concrete modular elements, which you can see here. You can see these joints, openings for the trees, and then the foundations for the, the, the lamppost. This in the middle ahead, and then the, the bench has a, a lighter version of what we had done in the model. Again, you can see this coolness, this kind of soft, um, not colored uh, uh, image. The lonex trees, the water element, where you can drink. This is a beautiful image too, where you, you, uh, you read the, 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 the inventions. The trees need to grow, um, some of them do die, I and mean, it is very harsh. I think it's the harshest place we've ever tried to plant trees. Um, but they are doing much better now than in the mock-up and, and we can control the, the irrigation uh, system much more and, and over time, and I really hope uh, if we come back in, in five years, that this, this will become a full uh, canopy, which is the idea that and the lands will really be below uh, that canopy. And then here, the, 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 the help, remember, we didn't change anything except for adding this very well designed lampos that creates this kind of continuity and guides you to the next uh, plaza. Some recent pictures. And again, this outdoor room that we think is the first time that we've made this. I think that the, the, the quality of this project is that together we, also for ourselves, we didn't do something that we had done before. It's really an invention of a new type of, uh, of public space, specifically um, for Mohara. Um, maybe just to say a uh, few words, I mean, very few about what Bas also was saying. I mean, what, what is very interesting uh, for us is, is this notion of uh, uh, an exterior space that becomes an interior, or we consider it to be a real interior, or um, replacing uh, an old volume in the maze Muhayak by a void, which is actually again a volume. Uh, and these kind of ambiguities of um, how you play with words, they are not uh, black or white, they are rather uh, all or they're both, they're not gray, they're black and white, in the sense that they're void and volume, they're uh, inside and outside. This is actually what we really um, liked about the challenge of trying to make something from this area. 
it's a, a new, as Bas was saying, a new type of space that you kind of gently, let's say, insert on a pathway that is finally also creating uh, something for the local area, for the communities that live around there, and that can, in a certain new, gentle way, start to use these interiors or outdoor spaces, or what you want to uh, call them. Um, so, um, we'll show quickly two more projects. These are projects that belong, in a way, to the pro path. They're in the lower half, towards the, the sea. Um, well, there's uh, one which is a bridge, um, uh, kind of a perspective, you could call it. Because, um, as you can see, this was the old original uh, land border, and then the ring road came, and the reclaimed land, and Basically, uh, this is all gone. The fortress is still there, and the coast guard with the small harbor. But um, at the same time, uh, we need to cross just physically this ring road. So there's this one project which is actually today still ongoing, which is the, the actual crossing of the ring road with a pedestrian bridge, this, this red line, which somehow tries to also mimic the idea that it, in the old days, people or pearl uh, fishes would go over a stretch that would be uh, tidal, so it would be on high tide, it would be uh, actually covered with water. So the, the perspective from the peninsula to the, let's say, Muharak part is, is, is important from that bridge. And it actually connects, of course, the last bit of the path with the further inland uh, part. Um, and the second part is actually that red dot on top. Well, I can, with another red dot, try to show. Is it visible? Not really, huh? There's no red dot. Ah, this one. Okay, this one. Yeah, there it is. And of course, this one you have seen. So, um, first the bridge. There's not so much information. I mean, it's a long process. This is a bridge. So, uh, I think. Um, this, this, uh, this is a perspective that we made as well together with the perspectives as Bas was showing you uh, before in the, in the pro path um, uh, collages. And, and so what to do finally when you come to this ring road, when you have to bridge it, when you have to go to the water, you, you draw a line. And that perspective was very important for us. And so we, we kept on in all iterations of this pedestrian bridge, kept on drawing this line and it had various shapes and there were lots of authorities involved that uh, had to agree on things so we had to change several times the design and I'm just showing you a glimpse of the final version which will be built soon. It's a 120 meter long, uh, long line uh, coming from one side of the ring road going to uh, Bumaha Fortress and actually just basically crossing the, um, the Coast Guard area to land at the pavilion which is the uh, info pavilion at the coast side and uh, with two uh, moments of getting off and on with a stair and an elevator but the, the most important is the traveling on the bridge which is quite long, I mean 120 meters and it's a, it's a line but it's also kind of a a tube, if you want, and a, a tube that it reinforces the perspective once you're in there, um, but that, as a, as a bridge, also works in its structural height, so it's five meter high. That kind of um, spans in two times the ring road. This is the ring road, by the way. So it spans actually just the ring road in one time, and then from here it spans the Coast Guard area, to the Bumar port. And it's uh, symmetrical, so it has uh, two sides that are quite symmetrical with one support in the middle. This is, uh, as we now design the landing to go up and on, these are elements that are in the same concrete as we um, designed the squares in. So there's elements of health that are recognizable in the bridge. And finally also what is very important when you arrive at the, the side of, let's say, Muharak uh, inland, 
you have from the bridge a very good view immediately over the, let's say, the path uh, which we will be um, going to uh, find also. Or in the other way, to the, to the sea, of course. Um, just now going really back in time, this is uh, 2011, that's when Nura asked us actually the first time to, to make a project in, in Bahrain. And we we never been here. And, um, and um, by coincidence, this is also a project on the Pearl Path. Well, of course, it's not a coincidence, but somehow it's kind of a seed planted for a path to grow or to be established by, by UNESCO, but also by the whole uh, community working here in Bahrain on all the several projects that are now taking shape. So we're super proud, actually, to, to be able to have built this. And this is a, it's a collage of a project that has been built now today. Um, we actually built two. This is a, a, a dar. Uh, dar is a, a center for traditional music in, uh, in Bahrain. And we, 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 well, this is one in, in Muhar. Dar Jina, Al Jina, and um, there's one other one in uh, Rifa that's also been built, um, and that um, so these these two buildings they have something in common. But I will just now t talk about the one in uh, Jina in uh, Rifa Muhar. Uh, so this is actually the path. If I'm not wrong, it goes around the block there. So it just kind of passes the. Um, the new, uh, well, this central spot is actually an existing structure, an existing house structure of a dar, uh, and there's an open corner, or there was an open corner there, uh, on the on the plot, on the city small block that we could occupy for a new structure, and so we were asked to 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 make a, a an extension actually for this building which uh, would house a, a more open performance space for, for uh, musicians, musicians that are actually uh, playing still the, the traditional Pearl Divers music. And uh, this music is, 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 is very basic, because the Pearl Divers would play it on boats, um, per percussion, uh, singing, clapping, dancing. And, um, but, but extremely basic and, and pure and beautiful also. And so it, it's a the idea of keeping that alive as a tradition by making a building, making it public, making it uh, accessible and, and visible in this tissue, exactly there, that was really um, a very intriguing question we got. So uh, this is a bit of a skyline drawn of the place, the existing building, a house, and, and, and a new building. Uh, the existing well, the tissue has this kind of different heights, two, one, three stories, depending a bit on where you are. And so we, we could go up three stories, that's the maximum, so we used that maximum because the, the question was also to make kind of an educational program in there, some residency, some offices, I mean, and, and of course this uh, main, um, performance room for the musicians. This is one of the collages we also made for, especially for the Jina, uh, Dar al Jina. This is the Muharrak Dar. Um, so it's the central Dar. It's also the biggest one we, we let's say, we designed. It's, uh, it, it's, it's um, the central Dar for Bahrain or even uh, the area around Bahrain. And this is the plan on the ground floor. So you see the existing building that we also, let's say, cleaned up. Uh, there was, we, it's not that old, it's not a real monument. In the case of, of Rifa, this is a real monument of 100 years old. This is less old, but it still has this value in the tissue of, of Muharak. And so we decided not to do so much and just clean it up and, and use this space, this, uh, empty plot, this corner in the tissue, to, to establish again the little uh, paths or, or walkways around it, and to make a new volume that is somehow also, 
trying to uh, establish the idea of what is a dar in itself, but a kind of contemporary version of it, in the sense that what we, we learned, and this is not the best example, but that the original dar, they had these smaller, narrow rooms, the typical house structure of, of Bahrain, and the, the narrow rooms, they would play music in there, and that kind of setting, very intimate, with uh, people uh, playing that specific music, that was kind of the quality of that, that space. So we decided to make a kind of similar set of rooms, but just three of them stacked on top of each other. And this is the, the first one, which is the main, let's say, performance room on the, on the ground floor. And, and sorry, but, but there is, of course, a relation still with the courtyard, the existing courtyard and the, the kitchen. There's a, a kind of tea room or uh, magnet uh, and, a, and another performance room in the existing house over a small like gap that is in the city. Uh, three floors, uh, so uh, performance, uh, educational, and in this case it's more like an office and storage. The one in Rifa has, has more uh, a kind of a, a kind of guest uh, possibility. Still, people, uh, residencies uh, for for other musicians uh, coming from other areas uh, around Bahrain. So, um, and the, the, the plan, just to, to also say that, is a super simple plan. It's, maybe it reminds a bit to the lamp posts of the Pearl Path, but they're just brown columns that support actually three floors and, and inside the round columns there is a room that is closed and there's still the outside perimeter and somehow we try to establish architecture with just these, we call it now, uh, concentric uh, or these perimeters that are concentric. So, so you get the outer skin, the columns, the inner skin and, and somehow furniture or things that, that life uh, needs, let's say, are, are dancing a bit around or in there. Um, and this, I mean, I just show this because I just put it in, still in the airplane, coming here. This model was one of the moments we were talking about the project here. It was, I mean, years ago, but, but still, I mean, just to compare it with the bridge model that you just saw, I mean, of course, this, uh, again, this, this gives the promise, and you see how tightly it tries to negotiate its, its context, the neighbor, the existing house, and of course, the others that are not in the model, the, the new building. And maybe this shape is also an important one. I mean, you see the, the, the existing courtyard there, the kind of tapered shape on top. We had the idea that this building could somehow mediate the context of a kind of one-story high old Muhara with the new three-story high uh, structures that are gradually being built. And, and somehow that, that silhouette of the building does that. And there you see also the relation how uh, the new building relates over the courtyard to the, to the older building. Or how it's just parked against the neighbor. This is some pictures of uh, uh, how it's built and um, how it's kind of, uh, I mean, the, 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 the nice part about walking, I mean, that's what we discovered also with Bas, of course, together, is this kind of walk through the labyrinth, of course, but also the, the opacity and non-opacity of, of spaces. And, um, and that's, that building tries to apply that in itself. It has this kind of uh, transparency and non-transparency. And of course, being a new contemporary structure has to kind of be open as well. This is from the top. And you see how it's kind of integrated in, well, all the, the rest of the, the skyline of, of uh, Muhara. And here's the relation it takes with the, with the courtyard of the existing uh, Dar. And so, I will show you also more details, of course, because this project, it was uh, 
finished uh, in 2000, uh, no, I'm not wrong if I say 2016, but probably 15, in the end of 15. But it was a whole, uh, like a whole process to get this built. Especially, I mean, the whole, the idea is quite simple. All these columns, just a rhythm, almost like a temple of columns. Uh, some of them are concrete, most of them. Some of them are steel that, heal, that hold the vertical piping and ducts. And then there's some stairs, there's some technical boxes, an electricity cabinet. And then inside, there's the inside space. But just to, just to give you an idea, I mean, this was a column that was finally, after many attempts, uh, made the correct way. Uh, just to make a round column was already like a challenge. And we managed, I mean, finally we, we managed to make the, ch the, the round column work and, and we, we could go on. I mean, a four meter high round column. And then second thing was, of course, the, 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 the section. In a sense that there's this column holding slabs and in these slabs we could build boxes that was not that difficult. But we also wanted to design actually what you've been seeing already in the images, the skin of the building. Because, I mean, as well as in the Pearl Path, the, the whole, um, well, idea also is that you provide some kind of shading or, or a kind of filter, at least for the climate, the hot sun. And, um, and so our skin of the project was a very important research. And in this line, which would finally design also the silhouette of the building, uh, that's where we, we put a lot of effort in. Although it was not the actual inside space, a bit like the, the again, the Pearl Path uh, little squares. And finally we came uh, to this material, it's a ring mesh, a chain mill, uh, which we found actually in, uh, in Belgium, which was produced in Germany, but finally we found a company, um, quality wire mesh uh, in Bahrain, that that could that actually produced it. So we worked with a local uh, company to make a ring mesh, and the, the the nice thing about the ring mesh is that you can endlessly, uh, let's say, add to this rings just by adding rings, and. Um, so there's never a real joint, there's never an ending to this material. It's like knitting, uh, you can do it forever. <laughs> um, and, and together with Quality Wire Mesh, we made these mock-ups in their factory here in Bahrain. And uh, this is the, the kind of uh, almost like silk, like uh, once from a distance, this is a, a 12 kilo per square meter tissue, but it looks like silk. Finally, we're very, um, let's say, happy with how it came out, and then also in how we, because this new building had to be a kind of, a, or has to be a kind of public building, how it, it becomes a certain, like a curtain, like a small theater detail, and that was of course applied to the whole section and how it attached from the ground floor to the first floor, second floor roof, and how this mechanism that we then somehow invented together with quality wire mesh could work. And there's a kind of an, a rolling engine that pulls up the first part of the, 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 the skin of the building or the, the, the skirt of the building to be able to, to make it uh, in, in in the evening when there's like performances to make it uh, public. This is a picture of, of the building. Uh, you might have all seen it, of course. <laughs> um, it's without people. This was a Ramadan moment, so Bas Brinson, our photographer, flew in and they, there was nobody in the street. <laughs> but that's okay. I mean, you see the building, <laughs> how, uh, how it is. Um, but the idea that you could make a kind of opaque and transparent and moving building that opens, we found that very interesting, especially in that dense maze uh, at that location. 
So here is again from another corner. And here the, the relation with uh, some steps that we integrated to be uh, as uh, used as seats or, and, and to go in also to the existing uh, courtyard of the, the building next door, of the dark, the original dark. And then the room inside, so in between the columns, you see the stairs outside. There's a, a kind of a, almost like a carpet lane, which is wood, from which uh, you, the, the performance can be held. There's a sort of a ceiling, uh, like a technical ceiling. And in between, there's movable uh, glass panels that even have still within that a set of other panels which are perforated. It's uh, maybe, I don't know, by visiting all these uh, palaces around the Pearl route or path, you see these beautiful rooms that have these Musharrab-like shutters. Probably we were influenced. And also we, we understood that the idea of layering of, of different moments of privacy is very important. So you make a building that is almost open, but then finally it makes within itself a set of layers of, of uh, privacy that you can control. And so uh, even that you can open up entirely, as I showed before, to the city again. This is from the first floor, from the uh, educational floor. So it opens up entirely to the city. And you can again take the stair up, go higher, into, and that's this kind of very important space. Actually, the space in between, let's say, the inside and the skin becomes also a livable space in which you circulate, where you can hang out, uh, just sit, think a bit, uh, and be in the shape of this mesh. And finally, to overlook the city again from the top floor. And these kind of technical devices that support you, these are toilets, for instance, in the bathroom. And also, again, downstairs, how this mesh finally again connects to the lowest profile of the ground floor slab with a little, uh, it is a kind of a weight that turns into the profile to, to kind of lock it again for, for when it's a, uh, not uh, being, let's say, used for, for public purposes. So it can still have private meetings, kind of a measureless moment in there. But it's, uh, it's rather this moment when it becomes again alive. And that's, that's a picture that we took at the opening uh, of the, the Dar al Jina in Muharraq, where what we really enjoyed the most is where the entire city or the neighborhood, at least around it, that visitors from further away could come and just be there in this suddenly all transparent building because of the light changes in, in day and night and light inside lights it up almost as a small lantern. And, and, and suddenly this becomes like a little theater, as we call it, to, to, to the neighborhood. And I, I added some two small movies even in the end of this presentation that was, uh, we still like to show. I don't know, we were not managing to put it in the presentation <laughs> in the airplane. Uh, so we just do it otherwise, like this. So the kids, yeah. This was still, the, the, the skin was still down, and, but everybody was there. There was a huge uh, amount of people, and I, I heard, uh, heard that it still works like this every uh, weekend or every uh, evening when there's a concert, that there's people just coming from everywhere out of the neighborhood. And here you see the, the Pearl uh, diverse singers <laughs> and, and uh, dancers and rhythmic uh, musicians uh, playing and there's still another small movie when the, you have a more a few inside from inside the room and then looking outside to the street through the columns through the doors that have been opened and you see the curtains hanging 
and you see, of course, the dancing and, and singing people and being uh, enjoyed by, by everybody else um, of the neighborhood. Thank you. Great. Um, I was told I could pose maybe one, maybe two questions, so I'll pose one, and then we'll take some from the audience and maybe another one. Um, there, I actually brought two of the books. I brought both bosses and uh, offices. And one of the things I was struck by, uh, I can show them later, you can <laughs> later. But one of the things I was struck by in both, uh, both, and I didn't bring seven rooms, but I, I left it at home. I mean, one of the things that I, I think is interesting is in the introduction to volume that Christoph van Heroe gives, he immediately begins by saying, I think something like, in the first 10 years of office, they've achieved to managed to build 110 buildings, 15 more than OMA's first 10 years. And I, I always thought it kind of strange that you'd begin by saying, well, office managed to do 10 more than OMA, and I always thought, well, is it a numerical thing? That they're more productive? Or, yeah, it's a lot, well, the thing is, and, and I was thought, is it, is it because it's like a numbers game? But actually, I think what's maybe more interesting is there's an, it, it conveys an idea of working in series. I mean, you see this maybe in your presentation of false friends, uh, the idea of working in seven rooms. And there's almost this idea that, and now with, the, I think, the three, the, what's interesting about the present path and the, the dark buildings, it's an understanding of architecture through the working and improving in series, so building the mock-ups and then continuing to improve, but somehow that an argument can be made once, and the same argument can be repeated, but the argument can in fact get stronger. So the idea um, of doing a dot and then repeating it, but through small differences, or the idea of producing the same squ uh, square, but changing the seating, changing the planting. And I wanted you to maybe touch upon maybe this aspect of the, of the work, particularly in Bahrain, where this understanding of seriality is not just something carried from project to project, or a system which is, let's say, evolving, but almost um, a typological slash working through series that occurs on an urban level. And maybe where the discussion began, and where this idea of saying, well, you know, we'll do two dot buildings, and then we'll do another two of them, and they can be the same. Or we'll do the square, but it won't be a series of follies, but in fact, the variations are allowed for things to occur in the space. It's a, I think it's a very good question. Um, because the first thing that we decided to do when working on the project path was not making a path, which was in a way the commission. So the, the idea was to, to, from a singular path, to go to multiple um, situations. And, and then, then there was this whole research of making them be part of one single family, but at the same time responding to the context. Who's living there? How will it be used? Is it next to a building that's on the UNESCO list, or is it more in an, in an open area? So that this, and as I, I touched upon this idea of variation on a theme, it was really this idea, can they all be made with the same elements, but every time be just a bit different? So that, that, was, that was really the, 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 the 16 or 17 plazas really um, ridden your whole experience um, along the path. So the path is made by moments, instead of made by linearity. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to answer another question you had about the numbering, I, I, I think, I mean, it's funny that you have this, uh, yeah, like eagle eye to find these details, <laughs> Ali. But uh, it's true, I mean, no, what I think is important, and it's a bit like the ambiguity we were mentioning before about is the, but of course there's all these opportunities. Are they actually outdoor spaces or are they interiors? Are they, um, are they um, what did we say again? Uh, something like a, a, a room or a void, or a volume or a void. I mean, things like that we like, and I think we endlessly test that. And the weird thing is that projects, indeed we number them, they become a certain they have the same ambiguity if you want. For us, they're as important, and maybe because a non-built project is as important sometimes as a built one or vice versa. 
it's it's you can play with that uh, in a similar manner and maybe in that way you can beat Oma <laughs> after 10 years I don't know I mean that's a detail I forgot about but <laughs> you read it but but it's important that each project has a certain lineage of the pro previous and, and, and again of the future also and so they're always uh, interlocking and I think the collaboration with Bas is similar. Uh, we, we work a lot together on several projects and they have a kind of a, yeah, kind of, yeah, you refer to the mocha, I think that's a very important it's not, not that we see the mock-up only as a test moment, but we see it as, as a, another project almost, uh, and where you can make another project after that project, something like that. If that's an answer to your question, I don't know. No, that's great. Maybe, uh, but actually another one of the serial things, also the columns of the Dow building. So somehow the columns are all the same, but then there's the fake column, and so somehow even the seriality is reinforced, but it, it forces you to kind of see something and think you've seen it, and then you knock on it and you realize it's uh, it's plastic, not concrete. And so there's steel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, maybe let's open it up for questions. Any questions from the audience? try to do um, is always imitate the logic of nature and so 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 a tree what what does a tree want it wants a lot of volume a tree grows about one cubic meter per year so the idea is that you can give it as much cubic meters possible so it continues to grow and so of course in in in, in the city situation there is no earth um, so the, so what we did is is, is we, we had about a, um, 120 centimeters of uh, layer in which we put this uh, this, uh, this earth, this, this um, high quality growing medium, and then these these these, uh, these, these little columns support uh, the weight of the of the path. Of the so it, it is about a one meter twenty um, height, but so that but the, the, the earth is not it's not totally filled. So there's, a, there's still a, a, a layer of uh, of of, uh, <coughs> of, uh, of oxygen uh, that that help to to, uh, to keep the quality. Of the was a very Thank important you. moment because the Thank first mock-up trees were dying. <laughs> no, but this was a, and it was difficult, uh, as Bas was mentioned. It. And this, I think it's called the tree parker, right? So these kind of little boxes that you have like four columns, you put them next to each other each time, and then you can fill them with earth. And they become like the soil under the entire little square for, for each of them. Trying to uh, 
detail it better and of course there's like a kind of almost impossible limit you kind of reach and, and that's 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 very interesting it's not switzerland but in the good way i would say <laughs> i mean maybe i'll, I'll add to that that maybe two ideas that i i, I really like working in a new situation because you, you what one friend of mine told me once you should do everything once because when you do it the first time you're much more attentive because you have to learn you, you don't know how things work there's no routine so 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 it's so i think we're both not afraid of putting ourselves in situations of learning things and, and, and inventing things we haven't done before um, and maybe the series is a way of organizing that risk and i think that that's kind of part of it um, the second thing is there was and, and also a lot of thanks to nura who joined us uh, secretly kind of at what, what point suddenly <laughs> she was there um, there was a lot of support and, and a lot of um, eagerness to, to try new things. And that's very, that's what we're looking for, for, for um, uh, uh, clients that, that push us to do, to do things. And, and, and what I'm really proud of is, is that we brought um, intelligence from Europe when we made the first concrete. We did it with a, a company that we knew. It was expensive because we had to bring it in. Um, but then we, 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 we achieved in translating that in a local product made by product by a local company. I, I think that's very nice that we that we that we always looked for, for making it locally and not just as I told you the presentation was not about importing, it was about working with the, the, the what's here locally and, and trying to improve that. So that I think was was a was, was a very nice adventure here. It's a very good uh, point. The, the, the ideas, and, and we've done this before in, in other situations. In, 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 in London, for example, we planted 500 climbing plants in, in small troughs uh, in, in a hotel. In a similar situation where the, these plants need to get irrigation. I mean, you cut off the irrigation, they die. It's as simple as that. In, in, in Europe, you could have a, a bit more of resilience. Here, there's not. So, so there is a, a whole system of, of uh, humidity detectors and uh, full um, uh, irrigation system. So normally it works. But then of course you need the, 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 the regular uh, checkup um, to see that everything is functioning. So it, it is of course um, difficult to plant those trees in, 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 uh, in this situation. It is possible, um, but it needs, uh, it needs maintenance. But it doesn't need, the maintenance is more controlled. Does the system work? But you cut off the water, they die. It's as simple as that. And you are not afraid of something growing un under this pavement if you don't want to grow there? No, not at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Even if there's things growing there, they're under pavement, I don't care. It's, uh, <laughs> no, no, that, that, that's, that, nothing will grow underneath because it doesn't get, doesn't get direct sunlight. Um, that's, uh, we're not afraid of that. No, I, 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 the, the, the soil should be a, as, as, a, as fertile as possible. So, so we need microorganisms connecting the roots and that, that's why also we didn't the, the problem in the, in the first mock-up was that we also due to a time pressure we, we 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 made holes for every tree but here it's really one system so so all the roots will be connected the trees will support each other and the roof i mean it will be a whole community of all these trees working together that's what we're thinking. Answer the dog can, can complete. The, the, I think the main idea was not to make the line because the line for us didn't have any physical reality except for connecting 
buildings that survived. I mean, if other buildings would have survived, there would have been another line. So the line for us was was a strange thing. And then we found these opportunities, and we thought, let's make little plazas that look sim they need to look similar, because they need to be part of a system, and they all do the same thing. They allow you to sit, they allow you to be in the shade of a tree, they allow you to drink from the, 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 the water. In the areas that are, that are more residential, they allow you to go with the kids, to play with the kids. So, so, so in, in a way, we wanted them to look similar, but they are always a little bit different. Um, responding to the context. But, but if you think, ah, they look similar, that's good, because that's what we wanted to achieve. We didn't want to make 16 different plazas. So it was really this whole system, systemic approach, almost, of, of there is space to, to cook it, and, and it, it builds up this, uh, this, this, this moment. Yeah, so a way of kind of trying to integrate, I think, uh, drawing a red line, or whatever you call it, through these uh, different neighborhoods was, was just a kind of an act that that never really existed. So we, by making them similar or, or almost the same, they are like the buildings. They are like the monuments that are also on the trail. And in a way, if you're not really looking well, they are all similar. These buildings, uh, and then suddenly you see the differences only when you start to study them. And it's really the moment of going to each of the opportunities, as we call them that makes them special, that makes them unique, that makes it in a special moment in a neighborhood, and so on. And so so it's also for different people, I think that's, that's also to be said, because of course this is a World Heritage uh, Site, UNESCO Heritage. Um, it's, it's also meant for visitors, uh, walking the path somehow, and finding their way through the labyrinth, but also for the people living there. And so, these overlaps are super important, and, and that makes a lot of differences, if you want. That, uh, oh, sorry. many but it's maybe difficult to list them but it's also true that we're not experts I mean we should also say that so in a way maybe the best way to answer you is to say that uh, we have a certain call it, um, feeling with what we see around us and, and understanding and, and probably there's even misunderstanding if you want and all these things together make uh, us a set of call it decisions and, and and we believe that's in a way a culture meaning everything evolves and, and in a new uh, contemporary project in an older tissue is okay in that sense because it's anyway an interpretation and it builds on tradition but with interpretations and misinterpretations and I think I mean for that reason um, we didn't study all the things, but what, what are very important moments is, for instance, we were a lot in the, in the Museum of um, History, um, and uh, that you see the history there, and that whole story about Eden that we were 
slightly uh, mentioning just before. Um, they, they make you dream. It's almost like a European architect uh, looking at the US and, and, and seeing another world. And this is a bit similar for us uh, working in Bahrain. And so you have a, a lot of pre-assumptions. You learn a lot about actual uh, traditions and context. And, and also not only traditions, but just realities of today. And I think that's a kind of a mix of everything. It's maybe a very vague answer, but Bas can maybe make it more precise. <laughs> I'll be super precise. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think we have this um, concern of not importing a European type of cloud. At the same time, we had also the concern of not making it too Arabic. So, so the idea was really, can you make something that is so contextual that it's not referring to those things? And so in a way, the, the, the systemic approach, if you like, of always, well, we, we both have that in our DNA, so, so that works well, but we looked at where was a former building standing? How can it be replaced by trees? How can it be a grid so it's dense? How can it get the lighting? How can we cut out? Because we, we thought, do we cut out a weird form or do we cut out a kind of a geometrical form? Okay, geometrical, which is also in our DNA. Um, and so it, in, in a certain sense, the, the project build itself. So you, you give us another opportunity, in, in one hour, you may be less, we make you the project. So it became a system, and, 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 and so not a composition. And, and that, I think, was the quality of it, that, that it's, you, you, feel it's, you feel it's a system, and not, again, not a composition. It's not trying to refer to something, it, it is just what it is. Kind of build off of that. One of the things I was kind of struck by, and it's what's so great about seeing this presentation today, is because I'm used to seeing the buildings kind of within the office set of drawings, and then Bas Brinson's photographs. And now with the, with the this kind of presentation, there is this mix of the really unpolished photographs that no offense that also look like they might be models, like somehow they look like one-to-one -one scale models. Um, but what I was also struck by, especially for someone who does landscape, is the drawings are, and you see this on the website. Your website too, and the book. They're they're axonometrics, and predominantly a lot of the work is represented in axonometric, which um, for landscape is perhaps a, a strange thing because it means the look is somehow both systematic and geometric, and uh, each element is part of this. Let's say this field. I was, I was curious to see here, like what does this way of representing landscape uh, mean for you? This can start a whole conference. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's, it's, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on it briefly because it, it's one of our main um, researches is that we don't make an image. I, I don't want landscape to be an image, so we don't sell, we don't make, and we don't produce an image. We produce a logic that produces images. So, so the isometric is actually showing the logic of what will produce the image. Why? Because in landscaping there is no fixed image. But is, it, is it in spring? Is it in summer? Is it in autumn? Is it in morning? Is it in the evening? Is it now? Is it in 10 years? I mean, everything is living material, so everything is growing and changing constantly. So, so it's wrong to say this is the image, because it, it's not the image. It's just a temporary um, moment. So, so, so we, it, it's difficult, because you know, my colleagues would sell images, and people like images. So, but we try to sell uh, a, a reflection and, and, and a logic we, we try not to imitate nature, but we try to imitate it and use the logic of nature. And the isometric shows that in the most clear and, and, and intellectual way, in a sense. So, so, so we try not to make this, uh, this final image. And, and I can relate to, to where, 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 what I like with, with office, they make collages with art which are not an image. I mean, it's also, the collage also shows the, the way it's built rather than what it looks like. I mean, do you want to also kind of build on that? I mean, the, the, the making of the collage of the Dar buildings, for example. Do you find, I mean, one of the things that I find interesting about it, I mean, one is the repetition of the palm trees, so it also becomes this kind of structural element. But then there's also these geometrical elements, and for example, you, you add the fish traps and the bridge one. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm wondering kind of, especially for the students here, where they are used to seeing the rendering. I mean, there's this argument both in the representation, either through the photographs of bosses or of bus prints or yours, mm -hmm. And then the axonometric drawing is this logic, but I'm also wondering maybe if you touch upon what the making of these collages means for the understanding of the dark building. By each of our projects, we, we like to 
come to, and that's the same as what Bas was saying, but another version of explaining it is kind of a level of abstraction. I think that's important because it frees you, let's say, from reality if you want, but it allows you to think free about your project. And uh, in that space, if you want to call it like that, you 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 make decisions that are very um, direct and. Collages work like that, they are just like 2D representations over which you glue surfaces and they come together and they create a final two-dimensional image. But, but the thing is that they, they don't uh, pin you down to a promise or something. They at least they exactly give you a rather freedom than, than, uh, than trying to limit you. And um, that's how we use them. Man. And we believe a lot, and that's the same with the Axo for Bats, in, in the kind of, um, the, 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 how you call it, the, each of these uh, elements, they are complementary. Uh, so you have a collage, you have a plan, you have a model, you have uh, even a text, you have um, an action, and so on, even a detail. Uh, that's what we showed also, I mean, or a sketch. I mean, these things, they survive as separate elements, as products on themselves, and they have, a, they carry each of them part of the story. And the story is only complete, you could say, if you put them all together. But it's also a good story if you see them apart. <laughs> and it's not a promise. That's the good part of the, the, the story, in the sense that you you give yourself. A, and, and the strange thing is that the collages finally look a, a lot like the project, weirdly. So, so we are we are we are still fighting against these renders, which, which are maybe too early to decide on actual super detailing or something. Because yeah. it's, it's, it's really important this this element, the, the CGI, the computer generated images. As you say, they, they they give you a promise, but it's a very bad promise because the only thing you can hope for is that it looks like that image. It, it, it's a bit like like traveling with a tour guide, you know? You, you read, ah, oh, this is a very good restaurant, you go there, it's not good, you, you should discover yourself. And, and so I think that the, the, the idea of this abstraction is that the product still can become what it needs to become. It's, the moment you make the image, you can only be disappointed if it's not looking like the image. And, and that's, then, I, one, the moment you see the CGI, then you don't build it, no? you don't, you've already seen it. So, so I think it's more about creating, using, again, using logics, construction or of, 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 of nature to build something else. And you, I don't want to know what, what it will look like. And, and mostly we don't really know what it is. We know what it, in, you know, it's, it's hard to tell us to a client, but we don't control what it looks like. We control what it does. And that's much more interesting. And, and for me, the best project we've done, suddenly you're there and wow. <laughs> they, 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 still, they still surprise you because you're so busy with the logic of it that it does it produce something else. And, and I, those are the moments that I, yeah, that I like the most is that, is that, that, that it produces something that you didn't totally imagine. And maybe one last thing to add, you also ask about the photography, Bas Prinzen. We see it as another view again, and then one of these extra layers, as we were describing the collages or the plans. It's just a series of, it's not a documentation of a project, but rather another, again, Bas says, uh, Bas, the other Bas. <laughs> was saying uh, surprises us in showing as sometimes we say that Bas shows us uh, to us our own project again and so that's a, that's a very interesting way of, of working and, and staying uh, interesting. I mean you discover and Bas, the other Bas, <laughs> says uh, each time again your own project you're surprised again and that's that's I would say that's that's uh, that's something you you never want to give away. Great, that's a great final uh, note. So with that, uh, thank you everyone for being here. Uh, thank you, David and Bas. Uh, keep an eye on the Grilling Path Instagram. There'll be more events, a lot of great talks, and so. I like that. <laughs> so thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Baka and Nora, for organizing.